when I first came to ACT UP, I was so shy, I couldn't even stand up at a meeting and talk. It took me two years in ACT UP before I was able to get up and talk. And now I'm one of the biggest loudmouths in activism, so totally found my voice there. I said I felt I had to target George Bush because he was obviously horrible on AIDS. So there was a fundraiser <clears throat> being held for him in, in Pennsylvania. And once again, a dozen lesbians and me were going to this fundraiser. So we went to this Holiday Inn. And as we enter, there are security guards there saying, why are you there? I said, I'm here for the fundraiser. OK, I walk in. And I heard them asking the women behind me, why are you here? Oh, we're here to have lunch. <clears throat> and they said, no, this is a fundraiser. You can't come in. So I was the only one that got in out of the whole group. So I'm sitting there alone thinking, OK, what do I do? And I, uh, I remember I went in the bathroom and I sat down and said, OK, my heart was pounding. I said, Just relax, you cannot leave because you're the only one who got in. So the way it worked was you would sign a check for $500 and they would give you a name tag. And the name tag was your entry into the banquet hall. Well, some of the name tags were already filled out with names. So I waited until the woman turned her back. I just palmed a name card and went in the bathroom, put it on, and walked right in. And I sat there for two hours talking to Republicans about how we can help George Bush win in Pennsylvania. And I had picked this name, David Robinson, who apparently was a famous wrestler in the area. And everyone's coming up saying, you're not David Robinson. I said, oh, we had the same name. It drives me crazy, <laughs> you know? So I had to pretend that I knew this guy. Anyways, so George Bush begins coming from table to table to table to speak with people with news cameras behind him. I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna be able to confront him right to his face, right? And just as he's coming to our table, they say, Governor, could you please come up to the podium? Okay, so I missed that. So he goes up, and he was supposed to be speaking on health care. And he gets up, and he says absolutely nothing for like five minutes. He's just rambling. It's, it's garbage. And I think, okay, when am I going to do this? I said, okay, I'm just going to count to five and do it. And I had a bright fluorescent orange poster in my shirt that said, George Bush, drug company stooge. No record on AIDS on the other side. And it kept, it kept, by the way, creeping up. I kept having to push it down in there like this because you could see the orange popping out. And so I just said, OK, I'm going to just count to five and just do this. <clears throat> so I slowly began unbuttoning my shirt. And I said, one, two, three, four, five. And I stood up, and I pulled the poster out, and I began screaming, George Bush, you're a drug company stooge. You've never said anything about AIDS. Your record on AIDS in Texas is horrible. And I just began immediately, like 10 people, you know, threw me on the ground. And I just began screaming, act up, fight back, fight AIDS. And the Secret Service dragged me out of the hall and um, didn't arrest me. Asked me why I was there, how I got in. I said, that's not important. What's important is to recognize. But that's, you asked me what I'd learned. And that's the, that's the moment that really taught me the lesson. And the lesson is, being af having courage is not about being unafraid. Having courage is being scared shitless and doing it anyways. In 2007, when I was diagnosed with cancer, the chemo almost killed me. And I was in the ICU on Christmas Eve, and I was very near death. And I thought, well, here I am again. But this time, if I die, I will not be ashamed of my life because I've spent the last 30 years doing something with my life that matters. And, and it was worth it. And I think the point for all of us is to be, we're all going to be on our deathbed at some point. And the goal of life, whatever you believe in terms of God or heaven or not, is when you're on your deathbed to look back and say, I spent my time here wisely and well. And that's the only goal you can ask for. And I, I think I've done that. So when it's time for me to go, I'm five years cancer-free now, so I hope I have a lot of time left. But 
whatever time I have left, I'm not going to feel like I've wasted the time I've had here.